So this is the continuation of the previous problem, number 67, um, part C, D, and E. So we're going to finish off what we didn't have from the titration curves last time. So what is the next thing it asks is for pH at 10 milliliters. I'm actually going to skip to um, the, the pH at the equivalence point real quick. If you remember from last time, we, on the last video, we figured out that the volume is going to be 30.6 to the equivalence point. So, what is the pH at the equivalence point? Remember, we're doing a strong acid, strong base. So, the pH at any strong acid, strong base, or strong base, strong acid problem will always be 7 at the equivalence point. You don't even need a calculation. Um, so this 10 milliliters, if you remember from, if I like plot this out right, we know to get to 7, it took 30.6. And so 10 milliliters is before the equivalence point, like, you know, in this area. So we're doing simply a, it's going to be, still we're going to have more strong acid and it's, we're going to have to do a dilution. So it's like a two-step problem. So the first step is figuring out where we figured out where we were, right? We figured out we were before the equivalence point, and so we're going to have to do a, it's still strong acid in excess. Now, how much strong acid in excess is what we have to figure out. So, remember, we have to do some stoichiometry first. I'm going to do a modified before, add, after table, so we can start thinking along those lines. We also know that when we started, initially, if you remember from the a previous problem to get millimoles right we needed of initial moles of acid we had let's do that calculation so we know what we started with for the before it would just be m1 v1 right we got what was if we multiplied that out we know it's a total of 6.125 moles so if we multiplied out 0.175 times 35. We would get 6.125 millimoles. So we've, before we had any of this, we've been, we're going to have to put, they're going to change colors here. Before we have, we're going to leave strong acid, and I guess we can make like a, strong base, right? This is a little modified than the full table. 6.125 is what we started with. We added 10 milliliters worth. So 10 milliliters, if we convert that to millimoles, 10 milliliters of, if you remember from the beginning of the problem, it is 0.2 molar KOH. So that's our another M1V1. So we have A roughly what two millimoles exactly almost so if we have two millimoles of base added we added 2.00 now if you remember like if you think about it the strong acid and the strong base if you add 6.1 if you add 6.125 the strongest base will react with the strongest acid it can find and eat it away right so we called it eat it away so two right we're gonna eat away two so we're gonna only be left with 4.125. So at 10 milliliters, we have 4.125 millimoles of strong acid left, and we have to figure out how to get the pH from here. So if we go from here, 4.125, and we need to find a concentration, because remember, pH still equals, I'm going to run into room over here, but pH will still equal negative log of H plus. So we need to figure out H plus. And since it's a strong acid, we don't have Ka's or anything, so we're going to use it from our concentration. So our concentration, we're going to have to do a dilution. So the dilution, remember, we have to figure out a concentration. We've, we're left, molarity will always be millimoles over milliliters. So we know we have 4.125 millimoles. The milliliters 
is actually going to be total volume. So we started with, if you look back to the original problem, 35, and we've added 10. So the denominator is going to be 45. So if we calculate this out, the molarity is actually now, new molarity is going to be 0 0.0916. That's our new molarity. Now look, it should be lower than our original molarity of 0.175. So we know we've done that right. So it's been diluted. Now we take this molarity, this is the molarity of strong acid. This will get us what we need here. So if we continue, I'm going to go back up here, sorry, running out of room. pH will equal negative log of... 0 0.192196. Sorry, reading totally wrong. So our pH is actually just 1.08. Oh, 1.038. So, so there we go. I hope y'all can see that. Okay. So I'll review. We had the before, add, after. You always need a stoichiometry and a dilution. Two-part problem. So the stoichiometry is always the before, add, after, and the dilution. We have to find new millimoles over total volume. That molarity will become used for our hydronium concentration. Now remember, if this had been a strong base, strong acid problem, you would have found the molarity. It would be the same kind of deal you're just going to end up with OH, and so you have to convert that to POH to pH. Okay, so we already did the equivalence point, pH is 7. Now they want us to find after, 5 milliliters beyond the equivalence point. So if we look back to the graph, we are going to be, we already did a 10 milliliter, this is 30.6, so 5 milliliters after is going to be 35.6 milliliters of total volume of the base added, right, of KOH, just in case we need that. So five milliliters after, what kind of problem are we doing? Here it's a, we're left with a strong acid in excess. This is strong base in excess because all the acid has been eaten away after the equivalence point. So five milliliters after, they kind of helped us out and they already gave us the excess amount. Remember, we're looking for excess amounts. So 35.6, if it had asked for us that, minus 30.6, right? So 5 milliliters in excess. So these 5 milliliters of excess is what we're going to use to calculate our new pH. And so we simply just have to find, once again, a dilution to a new, to a new molarity to a new pH. So we have... 5 milliliters, we need millimoles, right, of 0.2 molar base. So we have only 1 millimole of base added, strong base. Now 1 millimole is our base, and we need to find total volume to get our molarity. Total volume is going to be, we had started with 35, we got to the equivalence point with 30.6 and now it's 5 after. So our total volume now is 70.6. So we're going to combine these two and we're going to get a molarity of 1 over 70.6 and that is a tiny number of 0 0.10146 I'm going to leave extra digits right now. Okay, so we have our new molarity. Remember, this is molarity of KOH. So this is molarity of OH concentration is how, we're, how we could use that. But we need pH. So we have two ways of working from it now. You can convert this to POH and then get to pH, or you can convert this to hydronium concentration and go directly to... Um, pH. So I'm going to do it this way real quick. 
So Kw, remember, over the hydronium concentration, OH concentration, will get us hydronium concentration. So we can just, remember, 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 0 0.0. 01416, our molarity for the OH, and we'll get hydronium concentration of another tiny number, 7.06 times 10 to the negative 13 molar. Now, if we already have hydronium concentration, remember pH always equals negative log of hydronium. So we put this number right here, and our pH is. I'll move this up in a second. Sorry guys, I've been writing off the wall. So pH is always negative log of hydronium, so pH is in this case going to be 12.15. So, like I said, we had you find the millimoles, you find total volume, you make a dilution. That's always going to be a part of your problem because you've added a lot of volume. We take that diluted volume and go to a molarity. And that molarity is actually, in this case, going to be base added, the OH. We get to hydro OH concentration, hydronium concentration, pH.